everyone knew that they can destroy it with this one. We got flow. We got flow. Even Alem got nervous on stage. We Yo, what's up, Curry in the Future Beatboxers? Welcome back to another Beatbox Analysis episode. I made another poll on my community page and you voted for Unity vs. Kocha at GBB 2019 this time. If you also want to vote for a video next time, please subscribe to my channel and check the community page daily. And ooh, I just checked the membership section and we have already three members and five supporters. So thank you very much for these guys right here. If you also want to join the membership program, just go to my profile and click the join button. Before I'm gonna analyze the video, I'm gonna check the comment section first. Let's read some comments! <laughs> oh damn, my squad is backing me up again. Who's waiting for Maddox to analyze here? Ryan, you're a man of culture. 214, rip Dilo's back. What happened there? <laughs> no one, not even a single soul. Alem, hey yo, everybody, are you ready? <laughs> His English is getting better though. 248, Google suggested passwords be like. <laughs> That's not true. I never take these passwords. 124, me when my homework is done. <laughs> yeah that's funny 320 police that are too addicted to beatboxing be like put your hands up put your hands up nobody literally nobody beatbox is in a battle no one me posting comments for maddox analysis you are a man of culture as well i'm sad at this battle it was amazing read more but there was no BBK. <gasps> I guess that's why this battle doesn't have 50 million views. Yo, I'm here for Maddox analysis. Dark Angel. Man of culture. Man, my young and Tanish also waiting for me. Oh my gosh, there's actually so many more. <laughs> People of culture. Admit it. If Kacha don't mess at their final round, they could win the battle. Interesting thought. I'm gonna look into this. I love how Alem immediately looked concerned when Kocha started We Got Flow at 10.22. We got flow. We got flow. <laughs> yeah, he really looks concerned. <laughs> he be like, oh, la la. 7.21, when pro backflip. Oh. 7.28, when you be backflip. <laughs> 2020 and I'm still thinking about what can happen if we got flow finished well. Wow, it sounds like this was the only problem why Kocha didn't win. Dilo, I didn't have any good routines for overtime round. 10-7. Lord, I don't know what I do. <laughs> 357, use headphones and max volume. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this was too much. Semi-final for this level? Are you kidding me? This is freaking final level battle. Damn. That's an intense comment. The cameraman at the back at 320 is certainly enjoying the drop. <laughs> yeah, shout out to David, the best camera operator of all times. He created a lot of my music videos. I'm really glad to work with this guy. Let me guess. Kocha didn't prepare for second round and overtime round. Am I right? And they don't know what to do. <laughs> is this how you need to read the comment? <laughs> 3 minute 50. FIB, I'm glad you're with another man. Oh my gosh, it actually looks so sad. Kocha failed to use We Got Flow. Damn, this comment has 1.9k likes. So I guess a lot of people are agreeing with this one. Time to analyze that. Let me analyze that. It's on Kocha. I said three. Y'all say the two and the one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's three. Crash down, build up, crash down. The little dance of Alex Leo. Crash down, build up, crash down, build up, crash down, build up, crash down, build up, crash down, build up. Crash down. 
the hell what bass always gets me, man. Alright, so D-Lo and Frosty started with these lyrics and this build up. And to be honest, I can tell that D-Lo made up these lyrics at the spot. It wasn't really creative and the lyrics were way too repetitive. Build up, do, do, crash down, do, do, build up. Then they switch into this transition where they do trumpets right after each other. And I really love this one. <laughs> But again, this build up was also really stiff because the drums didn't change. The only thing that was changing was the pitch. <laughs> After that, we have the first drop with Dilo doing his insane inward bass. But to be honest, this drop was also really stiff. <laughs> The structure was a little bit boring, to be honest. It kind of felt like a freestyle. <laughs> Then for the second drop, Frosty was hopping on Delo's back, and that was a really funny moment, to be honest. <laughs> This is a really nice performance element. <laughs> Then they were switching positions and also switched the drop. <laughs> But for me, it kind of felt like they were hiding that they actually didn't prepare this round. The sounds inside are really sick, but it really felt like they were just freestyling. So overall, the way they were performing was really nice. They have a lot of stage presence, a lot of power. But the structure of this round was really uncreative, especially for the build-up, man. Dilo has such sick lyrics in his solo performances, but this one was really poor. All right, let's get into the first round of Unity. Let me What did you just say? Oh, that's so funny, but it's also so good. Man, the dance is incredible. I don't even know how to count that. Guys, guys, this is so crazy. I was watching this live. I was editing the video. I saw this video multiple times and I'm still, I still go crazy when I see this, for real. This, I don't know if this is funny. <laughs> this poly rhythm inside, man, is so sick. And I really love how they use it more like a joke. It's like a really funny beat. But at the same time, it's really hard to do. And then they even changed the time signature of it. <laughs> so that's what I mean with Kocha against Unity. Unity has a lot of variations in their beats. <laughs> they got a little bit unclean and out of sync when they switched the time signature. But it wasn't that bad. 
Man, in this transition with the inward case snares and the odd rhythm, oh, this is so insane. You can tell that we're practicing this hours and hours and it's really entertaining to watch. And then the way out of a sudden they stopped with this transition and got right into the next routine. <laughs> That was so sick, man. This is really hard to pull off because most of the times if you switch too fast, you will lose the audience. But here it worked really well. And also performance-wise, it was a really nice idea to do a crowd pleaser at this point. So they were activating the crowd before getting into the next big part to get a lot of energy. But I have to say the beat they did when the crowd was going with them, it wasn't that good. <laughs> But they could get away with it because there was so much energy coming from the crowd. So it kind of didn't really matter that this drop was really sloppy. After this crowd pleaser, they kind of lost a little bit of energy. Especially the first part with the old school beats, it didn't really work. The melodies Alem and Alexino were singing were just too random. It sounded really messy. But then after Alexina announced the even more classic part, at this part they got all the energy back. Even more classic. And then for the end I would say it depends on your taste. But for me it was way too messy. Both doing crazy technical beats and not even the same beat, but like everyone has its own patterns. <laughs> But I really love the energy level at this point. All right, so this was the first round. And now when I compare Uniteam and Kocha directly, I have to say that both teams had crazy stage presence and both had really energetic parts as well as really funny parts. But for me, even though Uniteam at some points had really unclean beats, their creativity was just outstanding. So for me, based on that, Uniteam was the winner for the first round. Let me analyze that. All right, let's continue with Kocha. Man, it's a sick counter. Slap these bitches on Yeah, so Kocha was answering on the west side beat and that was a really sick counter, for real. <laughs> and to be honest, the copy part wasn't that good, but then they were slowing it down and making their own version and this was insane. <laughs> But then they were trying to counter another beat of Unity Team, and this drop was kinda random. Slap these bitches on. <laughs> Dilo literally was just making a long inward bass and Frosty was doing a really basic beat and tried to push it really hard and you can tell he was exhausted from that. Countering for the whole round can be a sick idea if you know what you're doing, but this was a little bit too random. <laughs> Oh, 
Then there was this jungle transition where I thought like, yes, they're coming back. But then Frosty messed up his beat a little bit and I was like, ah. And it could have been a really nice transition into the next drop, but then the next drop was really random again. You can style. And then they kept on going freestyling their performance and Dilo was doing this telephone ringtone sound. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just destroying Uni Team. Cool back. And for me, also, the joke didn't really work because the way they were performing it and acting, it was too bad. So I guess this was the second time that someone tried to make a fake phone call on stage, destroying Alem and again lost. <laughs> True beatboxes remember that moment with Paul Z. Yeah, so overall the second round was full of freestyling and trying to pull off crazy stuff. But the only part that really worked was the first drop where they were imitating the West Side beat. So I'm not really sure how much they were practicing, but I guess Dilo was focusing on his solo performance and didn't invest too much time into Kocha. So for the semifinals, they were pretty much out of routines and were just freestyling. <laughs> All right, let's get into Uniteam's second round. Let me analyze that. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I don't know about you, but for me, Uniteam destroyed it. From the beginning on, Uniteam had so much energy, man. Alexino started with this fart bass to hype up people, and then Alem was smashing it with drum and bass beat, and it was so solid, man. Wow. <laughs> And then they switched the time signature again and Alem, man, this technical part was just so crazy. Also, the way he was moving like a Terminator on stage. Oh, man, that was like destroyer mode. And then they got back into the drum and bass part. Man, this was so dynamic and ah, the performance and the energy was just insane, man. It's so much fire. <laughs> And then they even were countering a part of Kocha. Oh man, that was so sick. <laughs> this jump up beat they made, oh, it's so in sick, the flow of it. <laughs> I really love the vocal bass of Alexinia in this. And man, Alem just had filthy drums. And then his technical transition of Alem. I'm pretty sure no one on this planet can do this as powerful and clean as this. And then they stopped by bombing Gotcha. But the reaction of D'Lo was pretty sick with the backflip. But anyways, even with this backflip of D'Lo, Uniteam smashed it. So for me, there was no question that they won this. All right, so as we know, there was a third round because the judges couldn't decide. So let's check the judges' votings. That was crazy. Ali, Ali, 
<laughs> Only one team can go to the finals, though, ladies and gentlemen. We're French people. Out. Moving on to the finals. This side for Katya. This side for Unity Team. Moving on to the final Grand Beatbox Battle 2019 Tag Team. Either Unity Team or Katya. I say the three, y'all say the two and the one. Crowd in three. All right, so everyone was voting for overtime except Jayton. And Jayton was voting for Unity. So in some cases, this would mean that Unity would win. But at GBB, it's like that. If the majority of judges votes for overtime, it's overtime. And it doesn't matter what the other judges are voting for. So let's get into the first overtime round. Let me analyze that. In toi! This was the overtime round. So Unity Team started with an intro where Alem was doing a melody that was really off. It wasn't on pitch. And then they got into this beat with a really odd rhythm. And I didn't know how to feel about it, but it really fits their character. So for me, they get a little plus point for it because it was a nice performance element. And then they switched into a really long build-up with a disappointing drop. <laughs> but it was so funny that I really liked it. And the yodeling of Alem at this point was actually really on point. <laughs> But then it kind of got a little bit embarrassing when I started with the trumpet. And he was kind of like looking at the side, yo, how much time is left? <laughs> <laughs> then the ending was really nice with the harmonized trumpet. I really liked that. Then Kocha also tried to do a yodel beat and the beginning of it oh, was really off. <laughs> Alem was way better with yodeling than Dilo, but then Dilo saved it with this Walmart boy song. It was really funny, man. Lord, I don't know what I do, do, do. And then they were transitioning in one of the most epic Kocha beats. And you could feel that the crowd was really energetic at this point. Everyone knew that they can destroy it with this one. We got flow. We got flow. Even Alem got nervous on stage. We got flow. We we got flow. And not only Alem, Alexidio was really nervous too. You can see it in his face. Float. We got flow. And they started really good. 
but then they kind of get lost. <laughs> And it's so painful because I know how sick it could be. At one point, Frosty even was like giving up. He was just like putting the mic away. <laughs> oh gosh, that's so bad. Ah, I feel so bad for them. <laughs> Did you see how Frosty was smiling? He was like, oh man, we're not getting it. We're not getting it. <laughs> and then they tried to save it with the last drop, but sorry, they messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Alam and Alexini were looking at each other, be like, oh, that's not really good, right? Nah, it's not. <laughs> so yeah, looking at the overtime round, again, Unity team won for me. And I think at this point, I don't even need to explain a lot. You can tell. All right, let's check the judge decision. Judges, we look back to you to make a decision. Moving on to the finals. This side for Unity team, this side for Katja. I say the three, y'all say the two and the one. Ladies and gentlemen, in three. Two, one, wow, that was actually pretty close. So it's Jayton for Uniteam, Slizzer for Uniteam, and Chris for Uniteam. But then Pash and Gene voted for Kocha. Wow, I didn't expect that. Give it up, Uniteam making it to the finals. But yeah, look, at least they're showing love to each other, man. So everything is fine. And you can tell backstage they're big friends and everything is fine. Hugging each other. Man, there's just so much love in the beatbox scene. I love it. Beatbox scene, best scene. All right, guys, that's it with this video. Quick and easy. If you're right there, enjoy my content, please like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And if you also want to support me like my first seven members and supporters, click the join button and check out my membership section. Alright guys, that's it with this one. Hope to see you soon. <gasps>